In the uh, Trust Park Studios, it is Andy Gibson, Commissioner of the Department of Agriculture and Commerce, and been working full speed on both of those things. <laughs> Uh, top of the hat to you, sir. Good morning to you. Great to be back, Paul. How love, you doing? Love it. With the suspenders on everything, you are dressed for work, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a big day today, <laughs> working hard. Uh, bef- and there's a multitude of different things, Andy, and thank you for coming in, sir. Uh, I-, I do want to get to this one, though, because the uh, Keith uh, Killebrew Memorial Radio- Rodeo yeah. is-, is coming up, and if you need tickets to this, you got to get them, and here's a special reason why. Who is going to be performing? Well, we've got Chapel Heart lined up there on Friday. That's the Friday, July 28th performance. And then Drake Milligan on Saturday, the 29th. And this rodeo is going to be huge, this Killebrew Rodeo. And it's all for a good cause, supporting future farmers. This is a farm family that experienced a tragedy. Uh, And uh, Keith's wife, uh, Alyssa, is trying to keep his memory alive and do some good in the process. We're bringing the largest International uh, Professional Rodeo Association Rodeo to Mississippi, July 28th and 29th, and it's going to be 400 cowboys and cowgirls, uh, all your traditional rodeo events, plus bull fighting, fighting bulls, and something called bull poker. And uh, that's an event uh, that you don't want to miss. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com. We want you to come. Uh, I always encourage people to come to the Coliseum box office and buy them there. But uh, on top of that, you're going to have those two great performances, Chapel Heart and Drake Milligan. And it's happening during the weekend of our Ag and Outdoor Expo, the great wildlife show that we have yes, inside yes. the trademark. You can uh, enjoy the show during the day and then stay around for the rodeo that evening. It's going to be a great event. I'm looking and, forward and to it. And tickets just for the rodeo are available, right? Yes, you can get rodeo tickets. You can actually get a two-day pass to the to all the rodeo events, mm-hmm. uh, or you can come Friday the 28th and, or Saturday the 29th, and uh, we want you to do that. We want you to, uh, I want to see you there because uh, this is uh, the first IPRA rodeo that we've had. That's the second largest rodeo association worldwide. We have the PRCA, of course, with the Dixie National. Yep. But bringing this uh, level of talent here with, uh, with uh, over a $100,000 purse for the Cowboys and Cowgirls, it's going to be a great, wow. uh, great inaugural event. And, and again, it's for a great cause, a good farm family, supporting good. future farmers. In agriculture. Commissioner, somebody asked me, it's been quite a while ago, do we still have the, was it the Morgan Company that had... Uh, Harper Morgan uh, Rodeo, that's right. We, in, we, in Meridian area, we, are they still there? Do we still... Uh, contract with them yes uh, we have a contract with harper morgan rodeo company mm-hmm. and uh in fact i signed a, a three-year extension of that earlier this year for the dixie national and mr ralph morgan is uh, still going his son yeah. johnny ralph they're doing a lot of the stock contracting in that and uh it's a great uh, rodeo company we, we're already planning for the dixie national in february but here we got a great summertime rodeo inside mm-hmm. the coliseum it'll be air conditioned well, i was going to say which is air conditioned uh, so that's, that's right <laughs> air conditioned and that's newly remodeled uh right adjacent to the trademark where the right. where the wildlife show will be happening that same weekend Chapel Hart playing both nights or just one night? Or Chapel what? Hart's Friday night, Drake Milligan's Saturday night. Get Saturday your tickets night. at Ticketmaster.com. And I'm looking Do forward to this event. Kids, uh, kids, uh, what's the age of, uh, if you got kids tickets and adult tickets, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I think the age of 18, 18 months, kids get in, you know, uh, uh, without a ticket. But uh, everything else is like it always is at Ticketmaster. Let's let's talk about the other big event that was uh, mentioned over the weekend or on Friday is the American Idol. How did this come come about? And just uh, from uh, your firsthand account of this, that we wind up with. And I guess it's going to be in the Coliseum, or is yes, one of the it, trademark. It, it, it is. It's a great story to tell. We, you know, we always try to do something new and better mm-hmm. at the state fair. And uh, in planning last year's state fair, we decided to bring back the, uh, uh, the the beauty pageant and talent show that we hadn't had for several years. We had it in partnership with Hometown Magazine here in Mississippi, and it was such a success. I mean, it was a huge event. Uh, lots of contestants, lots of participants. The folks at American Idol heard about it and they actually called us and asked if they could come wow. to do a talent recruitment here during our state fair so we said of course yes we want you to come and they'll be here that first saturday the state fair runs october 5th through the 15th they'll be here inside the coliseum on uh, saturday october the 7th and they're going to be and, and it's open to the public you can come watch this but we'll have uh 40 contestants there that they'll select if by the way if you want to compete go to our website msstatefair.com 
dot com msstatefair.com and uh, the link there is how does you have to take a video of your performance the judges will look at it and then they're going to select 40 contestants for that saturday performance and then of those 20 will come back on tuesday october the 10th and uh, of those five will be selected to go direct to the auditions uh, in nashville so it's it's a it's going to be a wow. great highlight on mississippi talent we yeah. got more talent than anybody else well we've uh, proven that yeah. with the, the finale after all, all of these uh, years uh, that's absolutely true let me run this by uh, the the folks again because you threw a lot of stuff at us yeah right? i did uh, anybody can come by. Doesn't call, was, it's not going to be free admission. You can come by and watch this. Open to the public to, to watch. That's right. If you want to compete, more, the more the merrier. If you want to compete, it's a, there's a forty dollar uh, registration fee. You have to do a, a video, a promotional video. It's on our website, msstatefair.com. Check yeah. it out and find it. Every, everything you need to register is there. Right there. And uh, all That's the right. information's on the on the website. But 40 contestants will be chosen. Yep. Then it'll be whittled down to 20, and then it'll be the final five, and that five will actually get a chance to compete on the American Idol TV show. That's right. They'll go direct to the judges yeah. in Nashville. So, hey, it's listen. this is a new be a boom as it far is. as restaurants and, and, yeah. um, and, and hotels because – you will have people coming from not all over, not not just in Mississippi, but all over the South. Yeah, we, we're really excited about it. And and uh, during the state fair, we're doing yep. uh, a, a lot of great uh, new. We, I don't want to get into all that right now, but we've got some great acts lined up. We've got some okay. great uh, family friendly events, and uh, it's going to be another exciting and maybe the biggest fair we've ever had. I, I'm looking forward to it. Do you want to mention this? Is there a deadline uh, for the, that you know of, the, the cutoff to get that registration fill, uh, your your you know, video in, all that? I don't know it off the top of my head, but it'll be within the next uh, couple of months. So I'd say yeah. go, go ahead and get out uh, get, well, go and check it out on the website. October the 7th is the D-Day that... Um, yeah, uh, all of your efforts will come to fruition yeah. if you are successful. Yeah, maybe y'all should send somebody down to to uh, watch it and get some video and see some of the Very local good talent. Idea. Yeah. I, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of media there because it's going to be a heck of an event. And it again, is. good for the economic um, bloodstream of the city of Jackson and surrounding areas. Well, yeah, we 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 want to do what we can to keep Mississippi uh, strong and going you, in the right direction. You, you've tweaked us a little bit by saying that there's going to be some new stuff at the fair, but you want to talk about that later. Uh, yeah, well, maybe okay. I can come back and focus on the fair. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. There are there are a lot of other things going on as far as I do want to ask you this as far as any new additions or plans and how how did you come out uh, of the 2023 session? I don't think we've had John for a while to yeah. speak to that one, but your your review of that, your post analysis of the of the session, and what are you looking at as a strategy for the 2024? Well, we had a good session. Uh, we, we, we really had uh, just a few items that we wanted to address. Mm -hmm. uh, one of those was some uh, work on our uh, Agriculture Livestock Theft Bureau, just cleaning up some language there. We got that done. We uh, appreciate the budget that our legislature entrusted to us. We are now running, uh, when we consolidated the fairgrounds and the Central Farmers Market into our agency, we are now running uh, three agencies for the cost of one, and uh, we're doing it more efficiently than it's ever been done before. And I think we're doing, a, our folks are doing a great job because we got a great team. And so our legislature, we appreciate them. Yep. Uh, we uh, are uh, running the fairgrounds in such a way that it's there's no general fund money coming to cost uh, to, to the taxpayers' cost to run the fairgrounds. It's living off of 100% of its uh, event revenues. And we have booked so many events that we've run out of time and we've run out of space. And so we're having to tell people, no, we can't have that event now yeah. because we don't have enough uh, openings in the year. We're having, on average, seven events a day uh, at the fairgrounds wow. com compared wow. to the total shutdown that we had back during COVID uh, when we took over the fairgrounds. So we have Michael Lasseter, our director, is doing a fantastic job. I want to give him a shout out. And uh, But all of that is being funded at zero cost to the taxpayer, and it's driving a lot of economic development in the state uh, in terms of revenue, special funds revenue, yeah. and events of people coming to these big, huge events. Gives you an idea. We're talking about maybe over 700 events a year. Yes. Oh, yeah, uh, no doubt. Well, I think we were at 900 events yeah. last year. 900 yeah. events? Yeah, yeah. I know he's got a cowboy hat on and suspenders. It belies his uh, acumen as far as a lawyer. 
pretty you're pretty good a country lawyer. Yeah. You've been you've been following the the uh, the controversy or the I think it was last Thursday the Supreme Court had mm-hmm. dissertations over 1020, and yeah. if you watch that a little bit, and Judge Kitchens. Uh, made some arguments about uh, where the people would be jailed. Mm -hmm. If you want to touch base on that, when we come back with Andy Gibson, next. The Ag Commissioner and uh, Commerce also, and and, uh, it's Andy Gibson. We we talked about uh, HB 1020, Mm -hmm. and I'm not sure how this plays on you with the Capital District because you're right in the center of that. But your thoughts on it, because, yeah. I mean, a lot of that happens as far as the crime and the Capitol Police, well, how many times you have to call them, et cetera, et cetera. If, if you recall, a year, well, last June, we hosted mm-hmm. a crime summit, right. uh, so rebuilding the walls of safety summit, and we had a lot of participation from Capitol Police, DPS, the mayor's office, everybody was there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I'm really proud that House Bill 1020 passed, and I fully support it. I I commend uh, Chairman Trey Lamar. In fact, I wrote an op-ed explaining why I supported it. Nobody, well, hardly anybody printed it. I guess it's just not uh, politically correct. But I support it because we have a crisis situation in Jackson, Mississippi with crime. And I think everybody understands that. Not only is uh, the law not being enforced in a lot of areas or not able to be enforced by the traditional means, there is nowhere to lock people up, and decisions have been made not to lock people up for crimes that they commit. And so I commend the legislature for passing this CCID bill to expand authority, to put in place the judicial system. That was That's one of the things that came out of our crime summit last year was the, the, the police are doing their job and are doing their arrest, but the system has broken down in such a way that criminals are just being let back out on the street. The mud bug shooters who came and shot each other uh, were, were, were three times in the system and back out with no yes. consequence. Yep. This bill will address that. It will fix that, and it will make sure if the folks go to jail uh, and go to prison if they're convicted. It, it's it's a little bit um, you, you kind of get disillusioned on this one because the the fight of this as far as the, the mostly the Black Caucus of the leadership in Jackson was that we want to be able to elect these judges and keep them here. We don't want the appointed, and at the same time, the elected officials from the DA to uh, some of the judges are the problems of recidivism or putting these people back on the streets. Yeah. So I mean, it's it, it's it's. Um, uh, it's one of those stories that you look at and say, well, I think from Lamar to the governor to the uh, uh, the rest of the leadership is trying to help one way or the other. Now, Judge Kitchens, Justice Kitchens, during the, the, the hearing on Thursday, uh, took on the Solicitor General uh, over HB 1020 and said it required the CCID court to send those convicted of misdemeanor crimes to serve their sentences uh, to the Mississippi Department of Corrections prison in Rankin County instead of mm-hmm. Hines County. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, he was objecting to that, or it seems like he was objecting to that. But, and J.J. had the information on his website talking about maybe the the Solicitor General or the the Justice didn't read this. It said, may, not shall. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's a really good point. And, and I would I would remind folks, I think we talked about this last year. One of the mm-hmm. things that came out is the dysfunction of the jailing facilities in the city of Jackson and in Hines County. You have juvenile centers that are not being used. You have uh, detention centers that are not being utilized or not. They've been blocked by some litigation, uh, banning people from being locked up there. You've got the Hines County Jail where people are breaking out every other day. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's a disaster. What's the status of your holding jail? Uh, well, I don't have a jail. I have an armory. Oh, we we renovated the uh, Miss, uh, Mississippi Armory. Okay, the, what's the status of that? It is open, and our Capitol Police, JPD, Heinz SO, utilize it often, and we want more. Uh, we have the Highway Patrol Mounted pa- Unit, uh, Mounted Patrol there. It is open for law enforcement to work out of, mm-hmm. and we do use it as a location to assist and deploy law enforcement during our How, how many events. cells do you have there? We don't have a cell. We don't have a jail. We, we, uh, we, we take people, and if they need to go to jail, we, they are transported to jail. Okay. But uh, we, we have a, what we have is a task force of all law enforcement statewide plus local Jackson Police Department. Was Hines that County your ultimate goal? or was your goal to have actually a holding cell there? 
Well, my goal was to create this law enforcement center to work out of. Uh, I mean, we, we, we do make arrests, and when yep. people are arrested, they are taken to the armory, and uh, whatever action needs to be taken in terms of, you know, uh, where they need to go to jail is taken there. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the point of that is it is a working law enforcement facility mm -hmm. that is being utilized by multiple state agencies, and uh, we just got a grant from the Archives and History Department to replace the old windows in it that uh, are, have been there since the since before World War II, and uh, we'll be making those uh, steps this year as well. So um, you know we 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 have increased our law enforcement presence uh, in a collaborative way, uh, and and it's been a really a, a great game changer for the fairgrounds. Yeah, you know, since that bad episode we had, what was it a couple of years ago yeah. now, or mm -hmm. a year and a half ago? It, 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 it's um, uh, it, we had you've to. gotten by with some great uh, numbers so far. We we have, and we we changed the way that we do the state fair. We uh, we uh, have uh, a, a great program. We're going to do the mm -hmm. same thing this year. The legislature supported our efforts in increasing our funding to contract with the Department of Public Safety this year, uh, DPS, and all of their agencies, including Capitol Police for security. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate that, and we're going to make the most of it, and we're going to have a safe fairgrounds. I mean, we're not going to uh, uh, run. It's the bad guys that need to run. They need to go somewhere else and stay away, and that's the the uh, the line in the sand that we have drawn. Over the years, we've talked about well, since you've been in office, uh, expanding the footprint of um, uh, of the the entertainment in that area, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Parking, et cetera, et cetera. Any changes there or plans? Yeah. Well, we have, uh, of course, the legislature authorized us to purchase the uh, the buildings, the hotel buildings. Mm -hmm. Two of them now have been uh, torn down, and uh, they're being utilized now for parking. The third one is in litigation uh, with uh, uh, another state agency on how much funding that they're going to be uh, asking for their property. When that is done, it will be uh, part of that process. And then we have talk to a lot of architects and engineers about what to do there and it's uh, it'll be fronting i-55 uh it's gonna well, look we have a huge parking problem we have we don't have enough parking spaces for the for the numbers of people that are coming for example to the fair and to the rodeo uh so uh, parking is a, a critical need but also we want to be strategic thinking ahead for the next 50 years uh, we need to build new livestock and, and uh, multi-purpose uh, horse facilities because they're 70 years old, and our kids across Mississippi deserve a first-class livestock a pavilion uh, uh, better than they have today. Uh, and, and we need to build something since we have the funding to do it. If the legislature will get off of it, uh, we need to build something that is first class in the southeast that will further drive these economic development events, more events to Mississippi. And mm -hmm. I've got a plan to do that. We're going to be talking is, about is it. Is there enough uh, square footage in that area you're talking about as far as the newly acquired area to do that? No, or no, you have to tear down what no, you have? No, there's rebuild? not. We'll have, to, we'll have to expand. We'll have to expand mm -hmm. our footprint. Uh, to do what we need to do. Uh, but, you know, when we think about 4-H and FFA, these kids are our future leaders. We, we, there's a lot of talk about future, yeah. uh, you know, brain drain and all that. But this is where the answer is. You get these kids involved in agriculture, they're going to raise their family here. And you come to the Dixie National yeah. Sale of Champions, and I'll show you the future leaders and professionals of the state of Mississippi. Andy, I'm not going to beat up on millennials or Gen X or Gen Z or anybody else, but I'm just saying what we see and hear and read, uh, the, 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 the future job seekers of tomorrow, will, 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 these people are gold. Because when you're doing that if, uh, uh, on the farm, mm -hmm. you are setting your work ethic. They, they, and, they and have to work. An animal dies. Yeah, we we have yeah. we, we have a pipeline that is statewide. Yeah. Every FFA chapter uh, across Mississippi, these kids are ready to go to work. We're working with them in our department through internship programs, and the private sector is learning. This is the pipeline of the workers that they want who know how to mm -hmm. work. They know that the stock's got to be tended, and uh, it's not something you can just take a day off today. You've got to get the yeah. job done. Absolutely, been there, done that as yeah. as a kid. I do want to ask you this. As far as the Ukrainian war with uh, Russia, how's that playing out here? Yeah. Well, it has had an impact. Uh, it has had an impact. Now, we don't have any direct trade, per se, with Ukraine and Russia, but it has definitely resulted in increased wood sales, for example, to Europe, uh, d increased grain sales to Europe. 
because of the interruption of the supply chain there due to that war. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big issue, and it's created market volatility. Yep. But uh, Mississippi farmers are here. We're having record production, all-time record, and we're ready to meet the demand wherever it may be. Andy, always informative. I thank you so very, very much, sir. Do not be a stranger. When we get closer to the uh, fair, let us know and, and come on back on. We'll see you then. Thank you. you God bless you all. Have a